But I didn't say anything. And she said, then I got mad at myself because I hadn't said anything. And then another friend came over a couple days later and was sitting gently and we were praying and we were talking and she said, you know, you and I know that God works through all things. Yes. And that God's infinite plan sometimes we may not understand. Yes. And if God works through all things, then we must also know that this disease that your son has is part of God. And since we have not reached success in this sense, since the illness is progressing, maybe what you need to do is understand that this disease is also part of God and you need to accept it. And she said, I remembered how angry I'd gotten that the other person said this, and so I, 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 I said, no, I'm not going to believe that. I know God is working together for all things for good, but I'm not going to believe that this disease is part of God's plan for my son. And she said, I stepped up so boldly that my friend came right back in my face and said, perhaps, perhaps you need to give up your ego and your need to control other people. Because what you're talking about is your need to have your son sick. And, and she said, I'm, I'm his mother. He's only a year. He was almost two now. He's only two years old. What am I to... And she said, and, we, we, and there were all these theories they gave me about maybe this is, you know, part of God's plan and I need to give up my need to control other people through my prayer work. And, and, it, and she said it was so simple in the beginning when everybody said, God answers prayer. And that friend went away and she said, my life started to fall apart. And she said, another friend came over a couple days later and said, you know, I, I've been practicing um, Zen, a form of meditation for a long time, and it assists me to find peace inside. And she gave me a book on Zen. And right away, the first chapter was how to use some simple little meditative techniques. And she said, within within a few moments and she said I've been a meditator and a prayer for a long time and I'd sort of gotten busy being real specific in my prayers and, and wasn't finding as much peace inside and so when I started reading this book I was I was inspired about the peace that's always there and she said I read the chapter and was doing the exercises and she said three or four days later I was you know like halfway through the book and it started to explain where Zen came from this is her story now see and it came from the Buddhist philosophy. And she said, you know, I don't know anything about the Buddhist philosophy, so I was interested in reading about it. And she said it went on in the book to talk about uh, uh, Buddha. And what the next chapter was not just the Zen exercises, but it was the story, a brief story of Buddha, about how he was born a prince and left when he was, you know, 12 and went out and, and found enlightenment. And then she said in the book, it talked about where when Buddha found enlightenment, he then founded his teachings on four noble truths. And she said, I was open. She said, sometimes when I read books, I'm a little guarded. But she said, I was open. And she said, then it went down. And the first noble truth was, and this is what she said, life, this is what it said in the book, life is full of suffering and dissatisfaction. And she said when she read it, she just broke down. It came to a head. It wasn't simple anymore. Oh, God answers prayer, except if it takes a long time. Maybe this is part of God's plan. Maybe it's our ego that needs to have it be different. Maybe life is full of dis suffering and dissatisfaction. Maybe you and I need... And she said it wasn't simple anymore. And she said that weekend, my husband and I had to decide what we were going to do because Monday they wanted to put my son in the hospital and she said what they wanted to do was very invasive and we talked all weekend what do we do what do we do what do we do we went to bed Sunday night talking finally my husband fell asleep she said I couldn't fall asleep and she said I got up and I was downstairs and I was walking around thinking about all this stuff and she said what com kept coming to mind was when you were here you gave a sermon topic a lesson topic that said who do you think you are and that that's the key it's not about putting your feet flat on the floor and letting the energy from the mother earth flow through you and opening your crown chakra and raising your kundalini energy and oming till our lips fall off it's about knowing who you are 
It's about stepping forth with a mighty faith and doing the things that need to be done. And she said, I, I walked that night in my, in my front room and I was angry. I was angry at me. I was angry at God. I was angry at my church because why couldn't they help me get my son well? And she said, finally it came to me. I was expecting God to do a miracle. I thought if there was going to be a miracle, it was up to God. And what I realized was it was not up to God. If there was going to be a miracle, it was up to me, because God would say yes to my beliefs. And she just, and by this time, her son has seen his mother get this energy, and he started hugging her leg, and then she bent down and picked him up, and he's kind of got his face in her neck, and he's stroking the back of her head. And she looked at me and she said, I know you get a lot of heat for standing up and telling people that they're Christ's now. She said, I know that Charles Fillmore says in his book, Adam Smashing Power of the Mind, that Jesus did not think that he was the only one that had supernatural powers. That's how, how Charles worded it. But people sometimes don't like to know that they are responsible for what's going on in their life. And she said, I know you get a lot of heat. But she, and then she reached up and she grabbed my lapel and she said, that Sunday night, alone in my house, I healed my son. I healed my son. We woke up in the morning and all his symptoms were gone. We took him to the doctor, they didn't know what happened. It's been five months and there's no symptoms. I healed my son. And she says, I know who I am. And she leaned up, gave me a kiss on the cheek, and tears are rolling down my eyes, tears are rolling down her eyes, she walked away. I don't even know her name. What I do know is you and I do not have to accept that who we are now is based on what's gone on before. There are still dedicated, loving teachers that want to come and convince us that we are our stuff, we are our history. I'm not saying we didn't have a history. When I was sick, I, didn't, I wasn't saying I didn't have an infection in my spine. What I was saying was I am not the infection. I'm a spiritual being. I live in a spiritual universe and I'm governed by spiritual laws. That's the truth of this magnificent philosophy we call unity. That's what Jesus came to teach us. He came to say the kingdom of God is at hand. Heaven is right here. You get to make your dreams come true. I don't know how many times you have stepped up the bat and been knocked down. I don't know how many times loving, caring people who've been in this movement longer than you have have come up and said, perhaps that thing that you're looking for isn't for your highest and best good. Perhaps God has a different plan for you than you getting what you want, petty ego-centered desires, like a body that's pain-free like children that are healthy, like a life that's full of love and nurturing relationships. It can be challenging because there are still people who want to convince us we are our disease. But here, in this great teaching center we call Unity Village, here in this great house of God that we call Unity Chapel. What we can do is step boldly and declare a new reality. I know that it's scary. It's easier to stay on this side of the chasm and talk about our small self and saboteur and all that stuff. It's easier to do that than to step boldly and say, no, I'm a Christ. I'm God expressing uniquely as me. But if we are to change the world, if we are to make this glorious human existence work for everybody, if it's to be the adventure that Charles talks about, we must step up and make our dreams come true again. And it can be frightening 